How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. We're still on option B. This is 4A and we're talking about carbs. Let's get straight into that video. So volume 4A, carbohydrates. We talk about carbohydrate structure. We discuss an energy comparison between proteins, fats and carbs. And then we need to talk about the straight and cyclic versions of carbohydrates. So carbohydrates have a very specific general formula. They have Hayworth projections, which represent the cyclic forms of a carbohydrate. And then we need to talk about them as an energy source and energy reserves. So the main structural component of all plants is a polymer called cellulose. Cellulose is a class of compound that belongs to a carbohydrate. A carbohydrate is an oxygen-rich biomolecule, which plays a very important role in metabolic reactions. The foods we consider to be high in carbs are pastas, fruits and cereals and our old mate the fruit over here has a lot of simple sugars. So we have a straight chain version of glucose and then we have a cyclic version of glucose and these are in equilibrium in a solution. Now all monosaccharides have the general formula CxH2O to the Y and they will contain a carbonyl group and have at least two hydroxyl groups. In solution, isomers of these monosaccharides are in equilibrium with the ring structure and the straight chain molecule. The large amount of OHs makes these molecules very, very soluble. So large amounts can be dissolved in a small amount of water. So one of the key skills is drawing the straight chain and cyclic structures of glucose and fructose. Glucose is a six-membered carbon chain, which is known as an aldo sugar because it has the aldehyde functional group. In solution, glucose is in equilibrium with its Hayworth or its cyclic structure. And glucose will cyclize to produce a ring structure containing an ether link. And an ether is a C bond O bond C. So some of the properties of glucose, well, it contains an aldehyde functional group and it also contains a number of OH groups. It's highly soluble because of the large degree of hydrogen bonding that can occur between it and water. Now, if we want to draw the Hayworth structure or the Hayworth representation, then the two important parts are the first carbon with the aldehyde group and the fifth carbon. This is where the molecule will create a ring and it will be linked by an ether link. So the way I set this up is very important. Here I have my number one carbon with my aldehyde functional group and then I start to put the rest of the carbons into a hexagonal arrangement or a hexagon. On carbon number five, I have my CH2OH, which is my number six carbon, and then I've drawn my alcohol group coming off the fifth carbon. I'm now just going to go through and put in the OHs and the hydrogens that remain on the chain. And then we can see where this reaction will take place. The reaction will take place between the hydrogen of the alcohol group and the OH of the aldehyde group. That's the part that's involved in creating this Hayworth cyclic structure. So we lose water in this reaction and then basically the molecule bends around and creates what we call an ether link. So here I've drawn in my number one carbon. There's my ether link with my fifth carbon on the left hand side of the oxygen. And now I've just got to go through and make sure I get this hexagonal arrangement correct putting in the remainder of my hydrogens and hydroxides. I know my uh, H's can be a little bit funny, but that one there is a COH. And then as I come up to my fifth carbon, you'll notice that the fifth carbon is at the other end of the ether link. And then my CH2OH is sticking out the top. That is the Hayworth or cyclic structure of glucose. Fructose is a five-membered carbon chain known as a keto sugar because it contains the ketone functional group. So when it forms a cyclic molecule, the structure is quite different. Its functional groups contain a ketone, it has a large number of OHs, so it again is highly soluble in water. So the setup of this one is slightly different. 
The setup is between the second carbon, carbon number two, and carbon number five. This is where the ether link is formed. So here I am drawing in my second carbon, carbon number two, and coming off carbon number two is the CH2OH. And then carbon number three and four are not involved in the reaction, but I'm starting to form a pentagon. So here is my carbon number five with its OH group, and then sticking out the top of carbon number five is the carbon six with CH2OH. So the reaction here occurs between carbon number two and carbon number five to create a five membered ring with the ether group being at the top of the ring. So again, it's a condensation reaction that's happening in this situation where we're eliminating this hydrogen and then the link comes between carbon number two and carbon number five and it's connected by the ether link. So drawing in that link now, trying to get our pent pentagon correct. Here I have my carbon number five. It's connected to my oxygen, which creates my ether link. And then coming out from either side, I have the CH2OH. All right, we also need to compare the energy released by a carbohydrate compared to a fat and a protein. So a fat will release 38 kilojoules per gram, a carbohydrate 17 kilojoules per gram, and a protein 17 kilojoules per gram. We say fats are more reduced, that's why they produce more energy when they undergo combustion. So here's a sample calculation. A sample of 2 grams of cheesecake contains 6.4% of proteins, 44.5% of carbs, and an unknown amount of fats and water. Complete combustion of the sample produced 37.4 kilojoules of heat. Calculate the percentages of fats and water in the cheesecake. So we need to use the nutrient information above to determine how much energy was released by the proteins, by the carbohydrates, and then the rest must be released by fats. Water doesn't release any energy when it undergoes combustion. So we've got to work out how many grams of proteins we had. So 6.4% of 2 grams is 0.828 grams of protein in this cheesecake. We need to work out the amount of carbs, and most of this cheesecake was carbs. So 44.5% of 2 grams, and that will tell us how many grams of carbohydrates were present. So we have 0.89 grams of carbohydrates. Now what we need to do is work out the energy released by both of those by using the nutritional information. So we have 0.126 grams multiplied by 17 and that tells us how much energy is released by the proteins alone. And now we can work out how much energy was released by the carbohydrates alone. So we get the mass and multiply it by the amount of energy released per gram, which is 17 kilojoules per gram giving us the energy released from the carbohydrates. So where did the rest of the energy come from? Well, the rest or the remaining amount of energy must have come from the fats. So we need to just do a takeaway here to work out how much energy was produced from the fat. So they told us in the question that we have 37.4 kilojoules of energy released. We worked out the energy from the proteins. We worked out the energy from the carbs. So we're left with 20.1 kilojoules, which must be produced from the fats. So how many grams of fat must have been in that sample? Then what we need to do is get our energy and divide it by our energy per gram to give us the amount of energy in the amount in grams, which is 0.52 grams. From that, we can then work out the percentage of fat in this cheesecake. 0.52 divided by 2, because our cheesecake weighed 2 grams, multiplied by 100 will give us our percentage of fat. Once we've got the percentage of fat, then that does not add up to 100 if we add up all those percentages. So the water must be the remaining part of this percentage. So how much is less left over in percent terms? Well, we add all of those 3% up, taking them away from 100, 
and that tells us that we have 22.7% of this cheesecake that was water. Okay, so for A, some top tips. The structures are in the data book, so make sure you refer to them and make sure you know the functional groups present in the straight chain sugars. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time.